Hey, this is Mike from Insidium, and today we're going to take a first preview of Cycles 4D, our next plugin. Cycles 4D is a bridge to the Blender Foundation's Cycles render. Cycles is a unbiased GPU, CPU path tracing render engine, and we've built a bridge completely into Cinema. You don't need any host applications, it's all within Cinema 4D. So let's have a look. What we've got is a Cycles menu. And in the Cycles menu, you can create a Cycles camera, environment, light, node editor, the real-time preview, and some Insidium-based tools for updating and serials and bug reports and things like that. So let's have a look. We've got our standard uh, real-time preview window here, and that's linked directly to your scene. You can see your rotations and see the cameras in real time, update your materials. And we have pause and play, we have a render regions, uh, we have RGB which is going to split out the RGB channels and alpha as well. Take a screenshot, save a screenshot and then we've got a clay mode. And the clay mode is going to work when you've got lights in the scene. We've got the zoom which is going to zoom in and out of the actual preview window and a size which is going to be the size of the actual render so there's the lower the size the less detail it is. Got devices, you can choose from your CPU or your graphics cards, and then again you can choose from QDIT to OpenCL. OpenCL is limited, you can see more information there online. Then you have the samples and subdivision rates, so various options within the real time preview window. And then down here we have our node editor, and all the materials inside of cycles are created with nodes. And what I've got here is a custom made group with for a PBR metal. Then you can see we've got some custom users information. You can create really easy on the fly materials quite quickly. Change the amount of roughness which is like blurry reflections and it's quick and responsive. And inside the group you can go in start editing other nodes inside there and we've got an more groups so we've got a group inside there to control Fresnel so going back out we've got another, this one's controlling the Fresnel and reflections and things like that so you can see you can stack up groups inside groups and then create custom user information to play with so what we'll do is we'll have a proper look at that and we'll build a material from scratch so let's just get a new scene the scene I have the puck model downloaded from a, one of the websites where you can get scan data and you can see we've got a background loft our puck model and that's it and the reason that we're getting a black render is because there's no lights in the scene now what you can do is you can add a cycles light so just go in there add a cycles light which will create a light with the cycles tag and let's just bring this up and you can see you've got different light types from point lights spotlights area lights to sun and infinite lights but what we're going to do rather than using an actual light is we're going to do lighting with uh, materials so we'll delete that and we'll grab a plane object and just turn this segments down to one by one create a new cycles object material click on that bring up the editor and we can delete the diffuse node go into shader bring up an emission node and that is like the luminance channel in Cinema 4D. However, emission inside cycles will give you a light source. So put that into the surface and then put that on the plane object. And you can see we now have a light in the scene. So we can lift this up and we'll put it higher than the model. And we'll create a little three point sort of studio. Copy that and just scale it down and then we'll rotate this one and then do another copy over here perhaps bring it forward so we're now getting this lit scene purely with an emissive material going on some plain objects and these can be any colors and you've got strength as well so you can make it brighter so let's put this up to 1.5 just to brighten up our scene a little bit more see and it's uh, rendering nice and quickly what we'll do is we'll create a material 
it's a new object material put that on our model and go into it so what we want to do is we want to make a nice sort of reflective material where we can control the color of the base and also the color of the reflection so the way the nodes work in cycles is you mix nodes together so I'll go into shader and I'll choose a mixed shader the mixed shader gives you the option to mix between two shaders with a factor of 1 to 0 on how much has been mixed so let's just put that to 0.5 and to connect them you can either do it manually or if you just drag it'll snap itself into the chain so we've got that going in and then we want to get a reflecting channel so we'll go in choose shader glossy which is the same as the cinema 4d reflectance and you can see we've got different distribution models ggx uh, uh, sharp beckman and other things like that so we drag that into the second slot and then we have this reflective model and we can do things like control the amount of reflection by changing the factor or you can put a fresnel into there so let's say we wanted to have a fresnel control the factor so drop that in and if we look at our fresnel go into the basic tab for your shader and we can turn on preview selected node which will give you a preview of whatever node you have selected so you can see now that the fresnel is is what's controlling our factor so the brightness will be the diffuse the dark will be the glossy so we're going to get rid of that holding alt we can draw a line and disconnect it and then you can simply delete the node so moving on let's have a look at setting up a group for this so we're going to select all those three nodes we're going to right click and we're going to choose group selected that's created a new group and with that group selected you'll see it go dark and that's because there's no connections anymore so let's connect the output back up and we'll go in hitting the plus sign and put the shader back into the surface so what we want to do is we want to look at things like uh, how we can, can set up the user data so let's say we want to have control over the base color put that in the slot for the input that creates a new channel we want to control the color for the reflection so we put that in right click and we'll choose rename port just so we can rename this to reflection color we'll put in the roughness for the blurry reflections and let's say we want to be able to control the normals as well so we pipe in our normals and we'll link both of those up as well so now you can see they're all connected we have these extra inputs and outputs we don't need them anymore so we can get, hide those and then we can go back out and we have our own custom built node ready to go and this can be saved and reloaded at any time you like so let's have a look let's change some colors and see how we're looking let's go for a nice orange and uh, say a green reflection so you can see it was really quick we've created our own custom node Put some roughness into it. Let's maybe go for a yellow. And there we have it. We've made a reflective channel that we can use at any time we like. Okay, so that's the general idea on how the cycles works with the nodes, and obviously there's lots of different types of nodes you can play with very powerful you can go quite complex or quite simple even just use simple ones that you've built yourself you can also use uh, open shading language scripts there's a script node dedicated directly to that and you can download quite a few of those off the internet and just put them in and pipe them up as well so that's an over idea of cycles so what we want to do is we want to just show you the X particles integration side of it as well. So what I've got is a few files and let's have a look at particles. So in the scene we've just got an emitter emitting some standard particles, files cached and particles have no color. Now the particles are rendered because we have a cycles 4D tag on there and the cycles X particles tag gives you options for multiplying the size and objects so if you wanted to have 
cubes or something else in there, a list of objects rather than the default sphere, just put them in the objects link and it will render them instead. Now, one of the things that's been quite difficult to do is getting particle color out to render engines. So what we've done is we've built some tools inside of Cycles for that. So let's have a look. We've got a diffuse on here. And I'm going to mix the diffuse with an emissive. So I'm going to go shader, mix shader, drop that in there. And I'm going to mix in a shader emissive. Put that into the slot. And that will give us a nice emissive material. Let's just drop that down a little bit. And I want these colors because if we look at our emitter to the display, we've got a gradient random with these colors here. And I want to render those. So what we have is a particle node. So we go into input, particle information. And the particle information node has a bunch of information from the particles. And what we want is the color. So we can just drop that into the color slot. Like so, and then we're going to get our particle colors straight in the viewport. So that's nice and simple. And you can do plenty of things. We've got different options. So let's say we want them to fade out over time as well. What we need to do is just move these along and we're going to get another mix node. So if I hit shift to select this one, I can make a copy and put that in there. And I'm going to get a transparent and put that into the second slot. And then I want to control the transparency mm. with a gradient coming from the lifetime of the particles. So all we need to do is get a color ramp, pipe the lifetime into the color ramps factor, and then the color into the factor of the mix. And you can see now particles are starting to fade out. Let's put an environment in there so we can see what, what we're looking at. So you can see the particles are thinning out over time and you can control that with the gradient to get further control over when they start to pop off. Hide the environment. Let's push play. So you see they're sort of fading out over time. So that's the sort of control level you get with particles and this node has all sorts of options so for example you wanted velocity to be controlled by a gradient you can do that so let's get a another gradient and we'll pipe in the gradient to both channels and we're going to get the velocity and with the gradient I'm going to go in and I'm going to get one of the presets and you'll see we push play you can see they're getting brightness based on velocity so the faster they are they're going to pick up one of the colors out of the gradient and let's take off the reflection so you get some really cool sort of popping effects going on there and that can control size and all sorts of things so particle rendering and particle data is really easy to access now but we can do more than that we can also drive things like trails so it's a simple scene and we've got x particles trails and they've been rendered because we have a curve on there a cycles curve tag and the curve tag gives you control over the thickness and things like that with the rendering and let's say we want these trails to get the same sort of thing. We want color from the particle age. So let's go to our meta display and we'll get a gradient parameter based on age. Let's go get that heat preset again and just need to resim it. So I'm going to pause the real time, resim the animation. So we're now passing particle data into the trails play. Let's create a new object material. We're going to stick that on the trail objects. We'll go in and again I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to mix a emissive into the chain. So get a mix shader and what we want is we want that 
particle data color to go into these trails. So we're going to use a input attribute. In the attribute node, you can get attributes from things like vertex maps and all sorts of things inside Cinema, but it also has some options for X particles like trails. So get trail, put that into the color, and you instantly have the age based information straight into your scene, right on the trails. Okay, and that also does things like Skinner. So if we have a look at a Skinner scene, put a simple Skinner, and if I turn that off, you can see that there's particle color, and we'll create the same material. In fact, we could copy it. So let's go to our trails. Let's copy this material, paste it in, put it on Skinner, and then with the attributes, change that to Skinner. Mm -hmm instantly have Skinner colors based on the particle data. And that works with wet maps, vertex maps, uh, works with the R18 vertex colors, and object color. So we'll have a look at object color in a second. The other thing we've got working is smoke and fire. So you can see we've got the X particles domain, we've got a simple simulation, and we've got some smoke and fire volumetrics working inside of cycles 4d and the way that works is we have a point density texture point density texture node can talk to x particles directly so you can see this full list of x particles options and we've got it set to smoke and fire and fuel and that's just piping out into the vo volumes to get the smoke and fire and we'll have some of these up on the website and we'll also show, show you how to build this from scratch. So the other one that we looked at was the in the attributes node was object color. So let's just get a new scene and I'll create a cube. Put the cube inside a MoGraph shader, a MoGraph cloner. Let's get a grid array and a ground plane. So, okay, so let's say we have some colors on our MoGraph objects. We do this with a random effector and we'll just turn color mode on. So you've got colors. What we want to do is we want to be able to render those. So we go to cycles, create an object material, put that on our cloner, and we'll delete the diffuse and just use an emissive. To the surface, go to input attributes, pipe that in, and then use object color. And you can see we're getting the colors mm -hmm. from our MoGraph clones directly in cycles using the object color attributes. And there are other ways to get random colors. So if I take this one off, it's Alt, and put a input object info and then pipe random into there you can see we're getting some random variations inside there and you can then put in a color ramp and get the preset and get some random colors again going on directly onto clones using the cycles object info node or object colors if you want to do some proper get some proper MoGraph colors rendered inside of cycles. So that's a quick overview and we'll start showing more stuff soon and I hope you enjoyed that.